Hey guys, it's Jason from DrPreMed.com. I want to talk to you guys about staying motivated, what it takes to be motivated in medical school. And right now, it's actually about 2.30 in the morning right now, and I am studying because it's the end of one of my rotations, and we have something called a shelf exam, like a standardized test, to make sure you learned everything that you needed to know about that rotation that you're on multiple choice questions that you have to do. I think there's about 100 or so that we have to take for this exam. And you guys might think that's a little bit crazy that it's past like 2 in the morning and I'm up. I still have to be in the hospital later in the day and I have to take a test and also to do a presentation today. But that's just showing you some of the dedication that you're going to need if you're a pre-med or a medical student and you want to be a doctor. This is the road you have to travel. You're going to have to make sacrifices. And I'm actually, you probably think like, why am I doing a video right now and I should be studying? This is actually my study break. In front of me, I have a little bit of food that I'm going to get back to once I'm done recording this video and uploading it for you guys. But just wanted to let you know that some of the things that are happening in the world of medicine and medical school. And so what I did to prepare... Um, the um, clerkship director, they gave us like a packet of like must know, need to know information. That was a hundred pages or so. So I spent um, time going over that packet, making sure I had everything memorized and learned in that packet. So I did that earlier. And now I'm in the process of just going over flashcards and doing questions related to the clinical rotation just to make sure I got everything down pat and that I'm seeing the information information multiple times in multiple formats because there's flashcards. Then there's also questions. I did my reading on it as well. And that's just going to be the cycle that I'm going to do. I'm pretty much done with um, reading because that's somewhat of a passive activity where you don't learn too much from reading. But it's good to do that initial read through to get an overview of what you need to know. And with uh, um, the questions, it's interesting. I tell people this, like when you're on your clinical rotations, you really need to pay attention to what the doctors and residents and what everybody's telling you when you're there because that information is actually going to help you get questions correct when you're taking your shelf or board exam or anything like that because you got to think it's medicine. Everything that we're going through is clinically relevant in some way, shape, or form. And it was interesting because, um, just quick example, one of the doctors I was doing um, – in urgent care, I guess, and there was a patient with like an ankle injury and the physician was like, okay, I want you to go treat this patient, do an assessment on them, and then I also want you to look up the Ottawa rules for the ankle. So I went, like I haven't heard of the Ottawa rules really beforehand before this, so I did my up-to-date um, search and do the MD count to figure out the algorithm for the Ottawa rule, and that kind of tells you if you need to get imaging or not for the person to see if there's a fracture or a break. And based on the Ottawa rules, it was um, indeterminate, but we decided, okay, let's get an imaging on this person just in case. So did that, out, and then when we got the results back, no fracture or break, and they were going to be splinted and sent home, sent home with that to obviously reduce weight-bearing activity on that foot. And then the and then and that was probably what two at least two maybe two or three weeks ago I believe and now I am um, studying for my shelf exam I actually had a question that was based on the Ottawa rules for the ankle and the only way I got it correct was because I remembered okay what did I do in clinic in an urgent care center when I saw this patient what was a resident what did they tell me to look up where were the four factors involved in the algorithm for yes imaging or no imaging required. I just kind of remembered that from that and then I was able to get the question right. And that kind of shows you the power, like why you even do like these rotations, your clerkships, your electives and residents because you've learned from the doctors above you, the people around you, and that information sticks. It's going to stick a lot more than just reading a book and going through things on your own, but when you have somebody guiding you through the process, you're actually interacting with patients, then that information is going to stick, even if you don't think so. At least for me, that's how it works. And a lot of other people, that's the same way too. So that's one of the benefits of why I always tell people, pay attention on your rotations because you never know what's going to come up. And you never know when you're going to see it again. And that just is really helpful advice for you. So I, I'm not sure how you're going to be able to apply this in pre-med because you guys are mostly 
straight in the books, not really too much stuff that you apply outside with like shadowing or anything like that. But that's just kind of giving you a little bit of taste of medical school when you're doing, when you're out of your first and second year, when you're in your third and fourth year, when you're doing your clinical rotations in the hospital, inpatient, outpatient settings, and just seeing patients on your own or with the medical staff, faculty, and everything like that. That's just something to keep in mind that everything you see in medical school is going to come up and it's going to be relevant. I remember I had another case of a patient presentation and I'm just like, oh man, I remember this from med school. I somewhat remember this from med school. And I just got to dive in and just recall as much as possible. So that's when as a pre-med student, really take ownership of your material. Don't just try to cram it in. And yes, some of the things like your physics, you're not going to use too much in a medical school or your organic chemistry, but it's there. It's going to serve a purpose. But then ultimately, some of that material is going to become really relevant to a specific patient. And you want to make sure you know it because sometimes I have to draw a knowledge from a couple years ago or like the first year of medical school to work with a patient, do a diagnosis, differentials, treatment, and have an assessment and plan for that. And so that's just some things that you want to know where in medicine, basically everything that you learn is going to be important. It's going to be relevant. It's not going to be something that you're going to forget and not use again. You're going to see it. People are going to question you on it. You're going to get pimped on it. You're going to have patients that are going to ask you questions about it. And your peers are going to ask you questions. And you just want to be informed medical student so that you can be a really confident, smart um, doctor who can be there and do good for your patients. And again, this is Jace from DrPremed.com, just giving you a little bit of insight of medical school, clinical years, and all of that, and hitting the books late at night. I know some people are like, oh, why are you cramming and all of that? No, it's not cramming. It's I'm just always been like that before my test. I know I'm not going to be able to sleep, so I might as well capitalize on that time and study and learn more and pick up as much as possible but ideally most people are like oh you should get some sleep I think for like big exams or whatever definitely should get sleep but everybody should do what works for them I'm one of those people who doesn't need a whole lot of sleep so I'll be fine I know when I will um, get some rest after my exam and stuff like that I'll even um, try to get in a quick nap or so before resuming my day or in a couple hours or so so I'll do that I'll be fine and it won't be a problem but um, if you have questions you have concerns or you want to learn more about what's going on be sure to visit me at drpremed.com my website got a lot of good stuff happening there and a lot more for you guys coming up again this is Jason with drpremed.com study wisely